Hello everybody! If you saw my last video, you watched me transform my old workroom into what you see here. I put in a new epoxy floor, a partition wall, and made space for a couple of bigger tools, like my miter saw and table saw. Even though there's now technically less floor space than my last workroom because I built that little partition for my treadmill and my bike, this space is still so much more efficient. In today's video, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. We're going to have a peek through all of the drawers and cupboards, and I'll just share with you what I use on a daily basis. Now, if you did see my last video, you saw the space that I actually started out doing this in. It was kind of a dark, dingy basement with a little half door. My point is that what you see in this video today actually took me about five years to amass. I started with almost nothing and just added to that as I could afford to. I'm only saying this because I know for me when I first started out I would watch some of these workroom tours and I would feel a little defeated thinking oh my gosh well I'll never be able to afford that or I'll never get to this point. Start small and add to it as you can. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, so before we get into the main part of the room, I'm going to have a quick peek at this little addition I built here. If you look up, you can see my staging rug. I like to be able to roll it up and get it out of the way because I do have less floor space than I did before. I can just take it down and tuck it into the baseboard I have on the wall when I need to use it. Those awesome hooks were a gift from my Amazon wishlist, so thank you so much for those. I really wanted to create a space to tuck my treadmill, which is held together with duct tape. Yes, I know. <laughs> I will upgrade it someday. Um, and my bike and trainer. But I was also able to integrate some storage into the back part of the partition wall that I built. I put cross beams of 2x4 in between every single stud and used those almost as shelves. And I had some scrap hardboard here that I just screwed into the studs to make little pockets, if you will, of storage. So I've got the legs for some tables that I have to work on stored there out of the way. Up above on the top of that wall I have some extra 2x4 storage. And over on the other wall, I have my pieces of oak and pine boards that I use for making bases for furniture and plank tabletops. Bits of scrap wood that I can use for patching pieces and building furniture legs, things like that. And I've also got my two little step ladders hung there for reaching up above the cabinets on the other side of the wall. It's just nice that it's sort of tucked up out of the way and it doesn't really interfere with what I'm doing in that room. So coming back out into the main room, we're going to have a look at my little staging area. I was hoping to have this a little bit larger than it is. It's only eight feet long. But I have this baseboard here and it's about a half a centimeter off the floor and it allows me when I roll out the rug, I can just tuck it right in underneath. One of the most common questions I get asked about my workroom is how I heat it. I am in Canada. It is cold here in the winter. This is a little ceiling hung heater and it runs on a thermostat on the other side of the room. So I just plug it in and I run it completely with the thermostat. It's super easy and it does a really good job of heating this small space. I just screwed a scrap piece of 2x4 to the wall to hang my longer clamps on. I was going to remove this wall system here, but it turned out to be perfect for all of these containers of my hardware. I have a lot of vintage hardware that I've salvaged from other pieces, as well as a lot of new hardware that I've either purchased online or at auctions or really big sales at Kent. <laughs> That was a good day. So we're going to start off here looking at my pegboard wall. Obviously a tape measure is important. I use these wall hung baskets here to hold things like my wood fillers. I've got this little package of crevice tools. These are great for pulling paint out of wood pores, which I hate, but you got to do it. There's little tweezers there and a file. 
This little gadget is great. It's for holding nails on while you hammer them. I have huge fingers, so small nails are difficult for me. These are spreaders that I got from Princess Auto for spreading Bondo. They're great. They're stiff, but still slightly flexible. They're for auto body. Pick them up if you use Bondo. I use these little pry tools a lot. I don't know what they're called. I've had them for years. Because they're so thin, they're great at getting in spaces that normal pry bars just wouldn't fit. And just some odds and ends. I've got a paint can opener and some dry decks. I go through a lot of these plastic hardware guides. I usually buy them in bulk, or if I see them at thrift stores, I pick them up. Really good to have around if you work on a lot of vintage dressers. Of course, various types of painter's tape, different thicknesses. I have to have ear protection. I have really sensitive ears. Eye protection and a dust mask. I've collected various types of wood finish touch-up markers. These are the Minwax ones I used to use the most. I do really like them on certain applications. Sometimes they work better than other times. This is just various blades, knives, scrapers. And this little precision screwdriver kit does come in handy every now and then when I have tiny little screws, usually on small hinges. This is a nail punch, super handy when working on antique furniture and you need to pop a nail back in under the surface. And this tool is probably one of my most used tools. It's a mini ratcheting screwdriver and it's great for getting in tight spaces that you can't fit a full size screwdriver or even a stubby screwdriver. I just got these Mohawk graining markers not that long ago and I love them. I love how they flow. I love how fine the tip is. Super awesome product. I've also got various types of wood putties. These are great when you're just doing little touch-ups, not full refinishing. Not to be confused with this, which is wood epoxy. This is a two-part process. You basically cut off the amount you need, knead it in your fingers so it becomes one uniform color, and then put it where you need it. It actually dries super, super hard. I use this quite a bit for repairing big chunks that are missing. These are shelf pins. Almost every time I get a bookcase or a credenza with adjustable shelves, there's almost always a shelf pin missing. I also save shelf pins when I don't need them anymore. Guaranteed you'll need them at some point. These are putty pencils, and basically you would just rub the pencil into a scratch on a piece of furniture. They're okay. You don't get usually a precise match with them, but I have used them. These are magnetic cabinet door latches. Whenever I take them off a piece, I save them because I can use them somewhere else. You see these a lot in vintage mid-century style dressers. Basically, they are plastic drawer guides that you nail into the frame and it helps guide the drawer in and out, keep it from wobbling from side to side. This jar just has some rubber washers and o-rings. I don't use them all that often. And these are nail-on plastic feet that I've salvaged from other pieces. Occasionally I buy packs of these new. Uh, sometimes you just get a piece missing one, so it's good to have some on hand. And these are just some odds and ends. I mostly use these putty knives for scraping chemical stripper off furniture. Those are all quite flexible. I also have this very firm one. And then when I need to scrape a finish, I have a couple of different scrapers here. This is my Baco scraper. This was a gift a while back from my Amazon wishlist. I like this one because of the handle and these blades are not only reversible, but you can actually sharpen them and get a little bit more life out of them. It's not difficult to sharpen them, but I would definitely recommend watching a few videos on how to do it properly. I use this teardrop shaped scraper quite a bit for details. The wide edge is really good for scraping finish out of concave areas, and then you've got the point on the other end for getting paint out of really tight spots. The blade is changeable. I'm still using the same blade, and I've had this for about six months, and it's still sharp. This is the scraper I started out with. The blades are replaceable. See, I've got a spare blade there, but you can sharpen them. And then I have a smaller version of the same piece. This is a detail scraper and it comes with several different blades in different shapes and sizes. There are curved blades, flat blades. These are great for getting around strange details. Moving on to paintbrushes. I am not a paintbrush snob. I have paintbrushes by many different companies. For me, as long as it's durable and the bristles are easy to clean and stay nice and soft, then that's fine with me. 
These ones are from Amazon. They come in a kit. Um, you get several different sizes. You also get a big three inch brush as well. To me, these are just as good as the most expensive branded paint brushes. I like this little guy because of the rubber handle. It doesn't press into your fingers and you know make your finger go to sleep while you're trying to paint. I have a few different wax brushes. Some of them I use for putting on furniture shelves and beeswax. I like to keep them separate. In other words, I don't have one brush for all of those products. I go through a lot of sandpaper and for me, pegboard with these hooks are the best way to store them. 80 and 100 grit are what I use the most on solid wood. 120, 150 are usually what I use on veneer. And then 180, 220, and 320 are my finishing grits. Occasionally I'll go up to a higher grit if I'm sanding in between layers of lacquer or some other coating. And the 60 grit I almost never use. As you can see, it is super coarse. It's just too aggressive for most of what I do. Up here, I've got another precision screwdriver set and a couple of staple guns that I use when I do upholstery very rarely. I love these cases. I have one for wood screws and the other one is for machine screws. I wish I knew where these came from. They're older, they're secondhand to me. They're awesome. I love how this just flips down and you can wall mount them as well, but I like to have them mobile. I can carry it around the room with me. This is a hardware template and it's the first one I ever bought. It's actually the only one I have at the moment. Basically, you would just put it on your drawer face and figure out where the center is and then you can use this template to drill your holes for your hardware. It is quite limited because of its size, so I am in the market for a better one down the road, but for someone just starting out, this was great and it was fairly cheap. Of course, I had to find a spot here for my plaque. This was such an honor. I'm so grateful to all of you for getting me to that point. Vinyl gloves for cleaning and staining are a must, and I have these two little trays that are magnetic. I have a small one and a large one. Those are great for keeping track of all your things. I have a few different magnetic bars around the room. This one holds my Balco card scraper. This is another great tool for scraping old finishes off furniture. It's quite stiff and it has a bit of a learning curve to it. This was a gift from my Amazon wishlist. It's a little veneer saw. I'm excited to use this. There was no note with it, so I don't know who sent it, but huge thanks to whoever it was. Tweezers are great for, well, numerous things with furniture. This was the first flush cut saw that I bought. It's extremely flexible. The blade is replaceable. It's a great little tool. These are center hole punches. They're spring loaded, super easy to use. I've got my Japanese hand saw here. I really like this one. I bought it online from an auction. It was missing a couple teeth as you can see there, but so far it hasn't really caused me any issues and I really like using it. Moving away from tools for a moment and more into products, as you know, I pretty much only use Fusion Mineral Paint when I do paint. I am a sucker for Odie's Oil products, and Odie's Oil was actually amazing and gifted me all of these pigments, and I did a video a while back where I used these pigments to recreate a couple of elm dressers, loved the results, and they were kind enough to send me pretty much every color they make. I am so excited to play around with them. This is the OD Safer Solvent. It's kind of a more natural version of mineral spirits. It smells so good. Of course, we've got the Odie's Universal Oil. I use it all the time. And then I've got the Super Duper Everlasting Oils. The dark oil, it doesn't so much make it dark immediately. It's more that it allows it to patina a little bit faster than the other one. Odie's Wood Butter is kind of a mix between the Odie's oil and wax, and then I've got the Odie's wax, which is phenomenal hard wax. This is a really great thing to have if you are using Fusion Mineral Paint. It's a fan deck of all of the colors that they make, and they've since come up with a few new colors that aren't in this list. We'll have to see if I can get an updated version. But what's really cool about these is at the end, there's all these colors and let's say you like this green, you would flip it over. It's not actually a paint color, it's a recipe. So you can make custom mixed colors with these, super easy to use. And unlike some other fan decks, it's actually quite accurate with the color. These little silicone grips are great for opening lids that are a little bit stiff from dried paint. I use that all the time.
I used to use these waxes a lot in the beginning. When I first started, I was doing more sort of farmhousey finishes where I, an antiquing wax would be very useful. I don't use them as much now. These are just cheap waxes from Michaels, but I really like them. Lead test swabs are a must in any furniture workshop. You just never know sometimes and it's better to be safe. These are really easy to use. You basically dip them in vinegar, rub it on the surface, and then check for color change. I get asked about these all the time. This is Wiseel Furniture Self. I like to really use these mostly in drawers. Um, they smell amazing and they just, they nourish the wood without being greasy. They come in several different scents, but by far my favorite is the Lemon Verbena. It just smells so good. Not far behind that is Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter and this is the scent Orange Grove. This smells as good as it sounds and looks. <laughs> you almost want to eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> I use a lot of different stains. I've got several penetrating stains from Minwax. I also have some other gel stains. There's a few random Varathane stains in there as well. This is a water-based stain. I quite like it actually. This is the stain and finishing oil from Fusion. I bought this a while ago, but I haven't had a chance to use it yet. So I have to find a piece to try that on. This is their beeswax hemp oil combo. I use this quite a bit to deepen the color of paint and just add a little extra protection. And just some different products here that don't really use all that much anymore. Learning to refinish is always a journey. And as you progress down that road, sometimes you find products you like more than others. And that's the case with a lot of these products here. These are a couple of safer strips. They're a little bit less volatile than the stripper that I use the most, which is this stuff here. I love Circa 1850. I've tried many different ones. For me, this seems to work the best. Most of the time when I'm using a stain, it's general finishes. This one is water-based. And these other ones here you see me use <laughs> quite often on mid-century pieces. And this is gel stain in the color Nutmeg and Antique Walnut. The Java and Candlelight are also really nice. Kudos if you're still with me. Let's have a peek in the cupboards. Up top here, I have all of my Mohawk products. I've got the Easy Vinyl Sealer toner and lacquer. These are just different cloths and wax pads. And at the bottom, I've got some shop towels and different gloves for stripping, etc. Up here, I've got some dry decks at the top, um, Bondo. This is my respirator that I use when I'm using spray paints and chemicals. I've also got some N95 masks there and some of the different spray paints and primers that I use on occasion. In the next cupboard, I've got some spare painter's tape. This is masking tape attached to plastic. So this is great if you're masking off certain parts, if you want to spray paint so that you don't get paint all over the dresser or whatever you're working on. I've also got some spare sandpaper here. These were gifts from my Amazon wishlist. I've used the Powertech before. I've never used the Tiger Shark. I'm excited to see how, how it is. Now this one's a little bit different. I had a lot of people tell me I should try these. They're called a net disc and supposedly it's supposed to really help with dust. So I'm excited to give those a try. I've got some more paint in here. I usually use these on hardware. These little handles are cheap and they're really great for getting a nice even spray without hurting your finger on the nozzle. The last two upper cabinets I have for staging items. I'm very basic with my staging. It is not my forte. I basically do as little as possible because it's really easy to overdo it. I've had a lot of people ask me why I don't use real plants. I just don't have the space and some of the faux plants you get today are quite realistic looking. This drawer is where I keep all of my artist brushes and graining tool. This next drawer, I have some stripping pads. I've got some scratch bright pads that I cut into smaller individual sections. And I've got a couple bits of the 40 steel wool. Some people call it 40 steel wool. Some people call it 40 steel wool. It's all the same thing. This drawer is where I keep mainly my Mercury Merlon pads, and these are what I use to apply Odie's oil and some other finishes. I usually cut each of these sheets down into three or four individual pieces. These are some non-woven pads. They're very similar to the Mercury Merlon. They're just not the same brand. And here I've got some odds and ends of sanding sponges and hand sanding tools. 
I used to have a mouse sander a long time ago and I still have some of the sandpaper and also my contour sanding grips. In this drawer, I've got a few different blocks for sharpening chisels and blades. There's honing compound and a couple of furniture repair kits with different putties and these are almost like paints. I've used these in a few videos for wood graining. Underneath here is all of my cleaning supplies, including my favorite Zep degreaser, and I also have a large jug of it that I use to replenish the small one. Oxalic acid is an absolute must for me. TSP is great for cleaning. Mineral spirits, of course, and again, a big jug to fill the little jug. And some vinegar. In here, I've got some different primers, order blocking sprays, um, some different wood glues. I've got a couple of different types. Glue spatula, weld bond, epoxy, contact cement, and some various glue syringes and applicators. I use foam brushes a lot for stain and polyacrylic. I've also got some metal polish. In here, I've got this big, nasty jug of hemp oil. I go through a lot of it. I've got some extra shelving for the cabinets, and then I've got two of these big canvas tarps. They're polylined on the bottom. They're great to protect my new floor. And these last two cabinets is where I keep the rest of my staging items. I don't have a lot of staging stuff. I don't have a lot of room to store it, so I try to keep it to a minimum. Some pretty basic things. What I do need to get is some more staging art. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been using that same clock for years. And this is my absolute favorite mug of all time. It's the best. Just wait for it. No. I've also got my new Festool Dust Collector Vacuum. And this is where the rest of my tools are. I've got magnetic screwdrivers, wrenches, my dead blow mallet, which I use all the time. I've got some wood dowels up on the top there and just various bits and bobs. This is a great tool to have. It's an extendable magnetic wand. It's actually quite strong. Great for when you drop screws inside furniture and it just sticks to this. First aid kit is important as is a serviced fire extinguisher. I've got some heavy duty hand cleaner there, random bits for the central vacuum, shop towels of course. And this was something I purchased when I redid the room. It gets very, very humid here in the summer. We're talking like 99%. <laughs> and it's good to know the temperature, especially when you're storing things like paint. I have a lot of clamps, different spring clamps. These little ones are super cute. This 11 inch metal face clamp is an absolute beast. And as I mentioned in the other video, I gave my little work table here just a very light going over with a sander and some Odie's oil and my little vise here. And I just hang my central back hose here on the edge of the table. I do have a sink. I was going to clean it before I did this video. And then I realized, you know what? This is a work room, work room, <laughs> not showroom. So, you know, this is what it looks like generally. This is another magnetic bar. I've got various bits here. Parts for the impact driver. These are countersink bits. Those are super handy. And this is a fairly new gift from my wish list. And these calipers come in really handy when you're trying to recreate things. So let's say I'm trying to recreate this knob and I need to know the exact dimensions. It can be a bit hard sometimes to measure these things. This makes it super, super easy. It's digital, super easy to read, very handy. This is just a little shelf that actually fits into a regular outlet. So you still keep your two original outlets, but you've got outlets on the side and there's two USB ports in the bottom, which is great because I can charge my phone while I'm charging my camera batteries. And on days that I'm filming, I go through usually three or four batteries. So it's great to have this. So having a look over here at this section, most of the power tools I have are Makita, so I've got a charger there. And this is my new baby. This is my new miter saw, and it's a sliding one. And I will just release it here to show you. So I can just use it like a chop saw where it just comes straight down, or I can slide it and push it back. I had to make sure that it stopped just before it hits the wall. So that's why I had to bump it out on the cabinet here a little bit. 
that's the hose that goes into the shop vac. It did come with this little sack, but I'm gonna need to figure out something better for that. Up here, I've got my heat gun and this little wooden holder. There was actually a set of two. Unfortunately, the bottom one broke and even though it's technically made for this, even with the batteries out, the construction just wasn't good enough to hold my two Makita tools. It was just held in with a few staples, so I'm gonna fix that. Up on top here is my Wagner spray gun and this is just a little kit I made myself with all of my GoPro accessories. It's nice to have it in a little carry case. Underneath, I've got a box of rags, which are great for staining. This is where I keep my rotary tool. And these are awesome little extension cord holders. These were an Amazon gift, but I'm not sure who sent them. So if it was you, thank you. I've wanted and needed a table saw for so long. This is a 10 inch rigid one. And the reason I picked that one is because it folds up and I can just tuck it away when I'm not using it. We are in the home stretch now. I know this is a long one. Spring is upon us. Every spring, this is what we get. So here is your treat for today. Just a sweet little nature interlude. Okay, so wrapping this tour up, we're gonna take a look at the uppers. I've got some spare eye protection here. I've got a dowel jig. These are knee pads. These are really nice knee pads. I'm super happy to have these. This was a pretty amazing gift. This is an ozone air purifier. I cannot wait to use this on a stinky piece of furniture. Now, this is in a jam jar, but it is not jam. This is sanding dust that I stole from my <laughs> shop vac when I cleaned it out. This stuff mixed with wood glue is a great alternative to store-bought wood filler, and it often stains a lot better too. I've also got my little iron here that I picked up for ironing on edge banding. I've got a pot for boiling hardware when I need to. These little discs are non-slip grips, so you put these on your work table and then whatever you're working on, whether you're sanding a board or a tabletop, sits on top of this and it keeps everything from sliding around. These are awesome. Up here, we've got a pretty cool carving set. This is gonna be fun to play with. I'm excited to kind of mess around with it. it comes with a bunch of different knives and gouging tools and a few little blocks to practice on. This is just some plastic film. This is great to wrap your furniture in when you're transporting it. It's great for keeping drawers from flying out on the highway. This set of furniture markers and wax crayons was another Amazon gift that didn't have a note, so I'm not sure who sent it. Wax filler crayons are great for filling little holes and dents. Super excited to use them. These are dovetail scribes, and this is something that I hope to be using more of in the future when I start doing a little bit more complicated repairs. It's a great thing to have. I know this looks like a million gifts from people. Some of these actually go back to November and December. I'm just a bit behind in my thank yous because of the break when I was redoing this room. This is an adjustable detail sander. I'm not sure who sent this to me, but it's a great little tool. You can adjust the speed. And recently I got this box of replacement sanding belts in different grits for it. So I am ready to go with this. These multi-purpose oscillating tools are really handy for so many different things. You've seen me use one recently to recreate a dresser. This drawer is where I keep all of our drill bits and attachments for the impact driver. These are pretty cool. These are aluminum setup blocks. It's basically a gauge set for using a router or table saw. And this is a set of step drill bits and these are great for cutting holes in metal. I also got these two sets of tongue and groove router bits and I haven't done much with my router yet. I do have one. I'm excited to use those. Having a quick peek down below, this is where I keep the circular saw and the jigsaw with extra blades. This is a pretty awesome gift that unfortunately came with no note. I don't know who sent this. This is a DeWalt planer. This is going to come in really handy for certain repairs. I found this DeWalt battery charger on Facebook Marketplace and I'm on the hunt for a battery for it. 
This is called a band clamp and these are great for irregular shaped things that you need to clamp like chairs and things that aren't perfectly flat or square. And these are corner clamps and these are really awesome for putting drawers back together after a glue up. I've seen it so many times where you take a drawer apart, you glue it back together but it's not perfectly square and then it doesn't fit back in the piece so these are great to have. I really like using these little jars to send people home with a little sample of the paint from the piece they just bought. It's great for touch-ups. This cupboard is where I keep a bunch of odds and ends, extra screws, bolts, dowels and plugs, biscuits, nails, and washers. In this section, I keep extra shop towels, garbage bags, and all of my empty fusion mineral paint jars. And why do I keep those? Because I like to mix custom colors. Here's one example. You can get some really cool colors just by mixing other colors. This is the section of cabinet that is underneath the miter saw. I have my Craig tools in here. This is a cabinet hardware jig. And then this is the pocket hole jig that you've seen me use a few times now. This is actually my router in this black case here. I've got a few random bits, but this is actually really cool. This is a 15 piece router bit set that comes in its own little box. This is super awesome to have everything all together. And there's pictures to show you what the profile is of each of these bits. We're just gonna take a really quick peek through my workbench here. I put this together from a Facebook Marketplace desk and I just added the casters to it so that I could move it around. But in the lower left drawer, I have all my shipping blankets. In the lower right drawer, I've got my surf prep accessories. This next drawer is where I keep all of my new furniture legs. And the drawer above it is where I keep all of the vintage legs that I've salvaged. In the top two drawers, I have various types of veneer. This is teak edge banding, this is oak, and I also have walnut edge banding. The rest of this veneer came from Facebook Marketplace. Someone was giving away all of these veneer scraps. Some are in better condition than others, but I still very happily grabbed them. I know they'll come in handy at some point. And the last drawer in here, I've got some spare industrial style casters. I have some random drawer slides that I salvaged because I want to make templates out of these to replace drawer slides in the future, as well as all of these felt furniture pads for the feet. Whew. Last but not least is the camera gear that I use. I have three separate ring lights. One of them has a diffuser, the other two don't because they were auction finds and sometimes auction finds aren't perfect, but they serve the purpose. I also have two different tripods, one has a gimbal on it, and two different mirrorless cameras, not including my GoPro. They're both Sony cameras, one I purchased new and one I purchased used. They're very similar and I also have very similar lenses on them. I'm still sort of learning the ropes with these cameras. I'm constantly trying to learn and make better videos for you guys. It's a bit of a learning curve and if you watch my videos start to finish, you can definitely see the progression of it. I hope this has been helpful for you. As always, you guys are amazing. On April 28th, it is my one year YouTube anniversary. Yep, <laughs> I've been making videos for almost exactly a year, which is hard to believe. I have internet met so many amazing people through this journey. Take care, thank you for watching, and I will see you in May.